Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's good to be together. I thought, uh, what better way to start off a TED Talk than with Al Gore, partly the father of TED Talks, at least how I, how I learned about TED Talks. Al's done a wonderful job of describing for us what the problem in climate change is. And uh, there's been many, many books saying what the problem is, we need to move quickly. And he also um, does, a, does a good job of explaining what needs to be done. The problem now is how do we do it? And so that's the basic concept that I wanted to get across today. And in fact, I think that there's some issues with public policy when it comes to some of our main uh, significant issues that we're dealing with um, in Manitoba and elsewhere. And particularly with climate crisis, we continue to reach into the old pocket of how we deal with, with climate change rebates and incentives as though the renewable options are the, are the exception rather than the rule. And with poverty, we continue to focus on charity, which promotes dependence, as opposed to focusing on transformation, which promotes independence. And finally, with crime, here in the city of Winnipeg, uh, just in the last six years alone, our, our police budget has increased by $80 million a year. And at some point, taxpayers are going to start asking some questions. Where does this... Uh, significant resources come from that haven't been particularly effective. Well, um, I work with, uh, with several guys and sometimes like to call them the million dollar men because at eighty to hundred thousand dollars a year for incarceration and at these huge uh, police budgets, it doesn't take long to add up to a million dollars. Well, we can train these guys for twenty five thousand dollars and uh, to overcome some fairly significant barriers. I really enjoy this picture because it shows all three of these big, very significant problems all in one shot. And um, what we have on, on the right is a homeowner. His name is Fred. He's an inner city homeowner and he's uh, struggling with his utility bills. He's a uh, definition of, 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 of poor. He's a senior. And on his right, three guys from the neighborhood. Well, uh, there's some things that we don't see in this picture as well. The house in behind is no insulation in the basement, limited insulation in the attic, has a high flow toilet, high flow shower head and so on, very expensive to operate. Well, um, there's some other things that we don't see in the picture as well. Uh, the services that are hooked up to this house uh, and have been there for years, things like electricity, uh, sewer and water, and um, also uh, natural gas, when they were hooked up, we didn't ask uh, Fred or whoever was owning the house at the time to pay for the whole cost of his share of the infrastructure up front But that's what we do with renewables, isn't it? If you want to put a solar panel on your roof if You want to put a geothermal system in your yard to pay the whole thing up front as though it was the exception rather than the rule and in fact underneath these men's feet is a natural gas um, Pipe that extends all the way two provinces over and it's literally sucking money out of the house so you can kind of see where I'm going here. Some of these guys are ex-gang members. And um, in particular, I wanted to point out the man on the stairs. His name's Kenny Catchaway. And uh, Kenny left the gang, and he was killed for it. Um, it's a very nasty business, what some of these guys are trying to get themselves out of. Horrible situations, and often uh, dating back to residential schools. Well, Kenny's left a wonderful legacy for his daughter of making a difference, of doing something positive with his life. And uh, one of the things that Kenny and his co-workers did was insulate this house and, and do a water retrofit. Well, look at the utility bill reductions just from this one average house, $712 on an annual basis. And if it's true of Fred's house, what I want to ask you today is, would it not also be true of every house on Fred Street, which is in a low-income neighborhood. And if it's true of every house on Fred Street, would it also not be true of every house in the neighborhood? And if it's true of every house in the neighborhood, low-income house in the neighborhood, how about right across the province? Well, here in Manitoba, we have a very small, uh, in terms of population, there's 80,000 low-income houses in Manitoba alone. Well, the concept that we want to introduce today is called transformative payback. And it's simply saying, we want to do things differently. We want to provide these renewable infrastructures 
like we, like we did with, with sewer and water and, and, and telephone and so on. And um, what does it mean if we were just take 40,000 of those 80,000 houses, just half of them, in Manitoba alone? Well, it would mean $28 million annual utility bill reduction. And what does that mean? Would we'll it keep more people like Fred in their house? Fred, Fred being a senior? Make uh, single dads and single moms easier to put food on the table? And remember, that's an annual utility bill reduction. So what else does it mean? Well, it means 3.2 billion liters annual water reduction. That's 2,000 swimming pools on an annual basis. And what a gift back to the environment that that might be. But it doesn't stop there. $80 million of materials, a great injection into the economy. Things like toilets and shower heads and, uh, and studs uh, for uh, holding up the insulation. And some of those materials, for example, 1.2 million bags of the insulation. And um, a lot of that insulation is either recycled glass or recycled newspapers. And so that provides a great injection to provide some value for our recyclables. And that would be a great thing here in Manitoba and elsewhere. And it doesn't stop there. What else does it provide? Well, 120,000 tons of annual greenhouse gas emission reductions. That's similar to taking 30,000 cars off the road, just here in Little Manitoba. And again, that's on an annual basis. And of course, 10,000 person years of employment. And you package all of this stuff up, and what do we have? We have a $4 billion societal impact. $4 billion. You take all of the benefits and put them together. And this is what we call the the creative economy. Because sometimes governments will want to go and try to attract business from elsewhere, and that's okay. But we've got skills and resources to do some amazing things here. In fact, uh, all of this would cost just $200, $200 million, and even that can be paid out of the utility bill reductions. So in effect, it doesn't actually cost anything. The $4 billion societal payback, all we have to do is start thinking of things in a different fashion. Let's think of it as though it were the infrastructure that we attached our houses to, uh, to bring in the natural gas, to bring in the telephone, to bring in the sewer and water, to bring in the electricity. And let's not ask anymore for people to say, I would like a solar panel, but I need to pay the whole cost up front. Let's do it on a monthly usage fee. And so you're in a positive cash flow situation right from the beginning. And that is what we call the transformative payback. And <laughs> you might remember this from a, from a few years ago. I drove around for three days thinking, I always thought those things were square. But uh, <laughs> in effect, uh, there was a great book put out a few years ago called The Upside of Down by Thomas Homer Dixon. And when we look at things like the natural gas, like in Manitoba alone, we export, we, sorry, we import $3 billion worth of fossil fuels on an annual basis. Let's look at that a little differently. Let's say, what a tremendous opportunity to mine that $3, $3 billion a year in fossil fuels and turn it into renewable energy so we don't have to import it anymore and inject tremendous things into the, into the economy. And that, that's, that's the creative economy. That's really making the economy tick and promoting innovation at the same time as helping the environment. This is a recent staff photo from, from my work. It's a nonprofit in the inner city. And, uh, I'm told that there's seven or eight different uh, gangs that have representation in that staff photo. Of course, these are ex-gang members that I work with, because you can't be a carpenter and a gang member at the same time. It just doesn't work. Uh, but uh, our goal is to double by the side by the end of the of the time, because with it within a year, and we want to double because that's what the transformative payback is all about. You find things that work, you provide it as though it were regular infrastructure and scale it up. And that's what we want to do, is to tackle all three of these problems, climate change and um, also uh, crime and poverty all at once. Find things that work, provide it as a regular infrastructure, and scale it up. Um, so what do we do at BUILD? Well, we help people overcome their barriers. We have a driver's licensing program. We have a parenting program. We uh, offer some cultural work main thing is, is, a, is, is offering a culture of work. And with work, 
I know when I look back on my childhood, I remember at least one of my parents going out the door, neither working or volunteering, and, and providing some, some sense of belonging to the community, some sense of giving back. Well, some of these guys have never had that opportunity before. So we have a bring your kid to work day so their kids can see their moms and dads working. And what a wonderful gift that that is. We also have um, um, women's first aid and CPR so that at the end of the six months that they're with us, they have a great resume and any employer would be glad to pick them up. I just wanted to, uh, to, to talk a bit about this man. He's another inspiration in my life. His name is Frank Yellowquill. And uh, Frank had a hell of an upbringing. He was in a foster home and uh, as Frank tells it, there was every kind of abuse there. It was horrible. He always wanted to get away. And um, he eventually was removed from that situation and put into a residential school. And you can imagine going from a uh, foster home, it's horrible, and the residential school actually being an improvement. What kind of situation that that might have been like for him? Well, there in the residential school, he met, he, he realized that he had a brother. There was another guy there with the same last name. And then he, he heard rumors that his mother was coming to visit. And he got all excited because finally he'd get to meet his mother. And sure enough, his mother came, but got the brother and took the brother home and not Frank. So here's a man that's been abandoned not once, but twice. Extend this a million dollars later. Remember the million dollar men? Well, Frank's another one. Frank is homeless in three different Canadian cities. Alcoholic drug addict, going through the whole process of apprehension, of arrest, of finding out what your crime is, and then doing the time. Easily a million dollars. Frank now runs a warehouse in Winnipeg and does a really good job of it. But the story doesn't end there. And this is the part about the transformation that I really wanted to talk about. Because Frank's daughter has leukemia, 14 years old. And... Um, Here's a man that has never been parented before. Well, after work, Frank Tank takes two buses, two long bus rides to go and see his daughter. And at the end of the day, after the end of a hard day, he reads her the same book every night. This is a gift of belonging, of compassion, and love. And isn't this what we want to transform? Isn't this the kind of the um, way we want to approach poverty, how we want to approach climate change, and approach crime. Consequences are very important. There's nowhere in Manitoba where consequences are more important than at Bill. In fact, I think we need stronger consequences in society for some things. But when somebody's ready to work, let's give them that gift. Let's help them get to the next step. And in that process, we will transform lives we will transform the world. And most importantly, we will transform ourselves. Thank you very much.